Okay, let me change the stream title. Oh, let me change the uh, let me change the Twitch title first. And mute that. All right, I am uh, gonna finish cleaning up the stove real quick. As you can see, it's got cleanser on it. And then we will get cooking today. Let me change our uh, stream title here real quick to Conk Fritters. Yes, today we are making Conk Fritters. It's gonna be great. Um, but again, let me uh, finish cleaning the stove over here real quick while everybody filters in. Um, a clean stove is a happy stove, and unfortunately, mine is currently covered in flour. But it won't be for long. Although we got a big wad of schmutz on it, let's, uh... You know, I suppose I could have done this before we started the stream, but... You know, this is all part of it. It is not all the glitz and glamour of just uh, throwing some food into a pot and it magically turning into something edible. You know. That'll do for now because we're going to wreck the stove again in a second. So. Today we are going to do conch fritters with a dipping sauce. And uh, actually, let me know that uh, a friend know here real quick. Hold it, please. Streaming if you want to watch, exclamation point, smiley face. There we go. Now, today we are making conch fritters, and I have got conch. Conch is a shellfish. It's kind of like a whelk. It is very tasty. My brother and his girlfriend are in Florida at the moment, and they can get it probably at every corner restaurant. For me, I have to go to Jungle Gyms to get it. So while that thaws, uh, we are going to make a dipping sauce for it. Um, we are also going to make, uh, surprise, pickled turnips. Wait, 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 you, you, you sit your ass down. Where, where are you going? Get back here. Turnips are good. So um, we're going to make some pickled turnips too. Um, <laughs> but for now, we're going to get started on that. For the dipping sauce, we're going to do kind of a nice... Uh, chili lime uh, mayonnaise sauce, but for our uh, turnip, we are going to do a brine with uh, red wine vinegar, because it turns it a nice little pink color. So while we get that going, let's get us a pan. It's important to get your ratios right, and in a brine there's going to be a lot of salt. So. We get us a Pyrex measuring doolally, and there's only going to be one turnip, but it's a big turnip, so we want to make sure we have enough. So we're going to uh, turn around so you guys can see this. Good thing this is plastic. This would take forever if this was a glass jar. Okay, that's enough. Let's see, that looks to be about 175 milliliters, which is good. We'll put exactly that much water in. But first, over here to the stove cam. We're going to want to put into this... Where's my salt? No, seriously, where's my salt? We're going to want to put our herbs and spices in. So we get a little salt going on here. We are going to do some celery salt. 
Not a lot. What do you guys think for pickles? A little garlic, some sugar. Well, we got the red wine vinegar for the sweetness. Um, you know, I'm going to use these for Cuban sandwiches, so why don't we do a little bit of mustard powder and some, um, some chives, I think. Mustard powder, chives, and maybe some Cuban. Let's go get it, and I'll be right back. powder, some cumin, see, cumin, some chopped chives, and let's do a little garlic powder here real quick. I guess I could bring you over here, except I'm just going to turn you around again in a second. Oh, uh, yeah, here we go. Just a little tiny pinch of garlic. There we go. And I don't have any bell pepper. So, paprika. Why not? Paprika is always good. Okay. Now, that's the spice for the brine. And I'll just go put all this away. We will put in the vinegar. And the same amount of water. There we go. Now we're not going to turn that on just yet. Because we've got work to do. Namely, we need to... Oh, I forgot the cascabel peppers. <laughs> That'll be great. Oh, wait, 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 guys, 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 look what I got, look what I got, look what I got. Little red peppercorns. There we go, just crush up about three or four in there, don't let that one get away. There we go, those will be good. Just don't bite into them. Um, So now we have to prep our jars. Let's get one. Now the trick is all my jars are either too big or too little for just one turnip. So we're going to kind of have to work here. Um, we might need to do two jars. Or I might need to scrounge for a different jar. Oh, technical difficulties, hold please. Yeah, here we go. Well, shoot. Where are all my jars? Ugh. Okay, we got jars. I'm getting too old for this. All right, so for our jars, you're going to want to stick them down in hot water as you clean them so that when you seal them up, the jars are warm and so is the brine, and then it will vacuum pack them. So I'm going to set these aside for a minute and uh, get the dishes out of the sink, in fact. Am I dropping frames? Yeah, probably. Let me clear out this side of the sink real quick. I am ill prepared for today's stream. <laughs> now, jars are in the sink. Conk is uh, conking. We are going to heat up the brine here real quick and let that go while we chop up our turnip.
also, um, let me do something here real quick. Um, fritters and pickled turnip. There we go. Okay. Now these things are miserable to peel. So I'm going to try with a vegetable peeler first. And if that doesn't work, well, yeah, okay. Nobody likes peeling turnips. because they have skin like a rhinoceros. So you will have to forgive me. I know this is not pretty or professional looking, but you know what? I don't do it often. There we go. Now that we've got that grand and glorious mess made, We'll just swoop that off to the side. Ooh, and I can smell the brine cooking already. Now, we're gonna slice these up and make them a little more easy to work with. Get the top off. There we go. Now, I think I'm gonna cut it into medallions first. And then I can halve them, or quarter them, or turn them into strips. Whatever you feel like doing. But it'll be easiest if we... Yeah, that thick one will be strips. These thin ones will be quartered into standard pickles. I like them thin. They stay crispy when you pickle them. And they're very nice. And then when we get this out of the way, we'll get on to the main attraction. That one's going to be strips, too. Uh, here we go. This is too small of a cutting board to be doing this, but that's okay. And this one's definitely going to be strips. <laughs> there we go. Pickled turnip. Wonderful. Um, oh, my brine's heating up here. Let's get a little stir. And turn that down. Probably add a little more salt to that if we wanted to. A little pickle strips here. There we go. Nice. Let's see, that is enough for that jar. Maybe a little more. Yeah, this one can go in. These are gonna be great in little sticks like this because they can go on like sandwiches and wraps and things like that really well. And they'll be really tasty. And these, well, we'll deal with in a second. But what we have to do now, I probably should have been doing this. Come on over here. Is we got to put the plug in the sink. My plug doesn't work that well. And turn on the water real hot. So I'm going to move it over there while it heats up. These jars are already very clean. But uh, what I need to do is uh, submerge them in hot water. There we go. And the lids leave a little something to be desired, so I'm going to wash them off real quick. There we go.
Now, I probably need a little bit more salt in my brine, just to make sure these things stay preserved. A little black pepper never hurt anybody. And just for funsies, uh, give me a second. A tiny little pinch, just the tiniest little pinch of sugar. That was too tiny a pinch. <coughs> Nose full of steam, always waft it to you. Don't lean over the pot and smell. Especially not when it's a piquant smell like vinegar. Whew. Teaching by example. are in really, really, really hot water out, um, and we need a towel. Get yourself a towel, dump the water out of your jar, and dry it very, very quickly so that the jar stays hot. You want the jar to stay hot, and then you're going to pack it full, get them over here, of our turnip. There's some space in there. I didn't do that right. See what I mean about these jars not being quite big enough? sit at the bottom of the other jar. Uh, give me a sec. Just kind of stuff it in there. Don't leave, I mean, leave a little space. You need the pickling brine to get down around all of it, but uh, I think we're going to be good here. All right. Okie dokie. jar full of turnip. Now, we come over here. This is where you have to be careful, especially since I am not sure this jar is suitable for heat. Um, I'm going to get a trivet to set it on just in case. guys, we got our nice piping hot brine here. See? It smells wonderful. And all we got to do is ladle it straight into our jar. There we go. Now that is going to be really, really hot. So get yourself an oven mitt. Seal it up good and tight. And there you have got pickled turnips. Now over the course of the next seven days or so, that will turn uh, a nice, um, the turnips will absorb the red wine vinegar and the brine and they'll turn a nice pink color. It'll be great. I'm going to stick that in the fridge. 
and let it fill. Actually, I'm going to let it cool a bit before I stick it in the fridge because you can see how the top's all swole up. I don't want it exploding in my fridge. Now these are a little big for this jar. So what we've got to do is probably quarter them. Luckily, that's not going to be difficult. There we go. Beautifully quartered. Same procedure as last time. We get our jar. dry it off, we hook our turnip down into it, pack it in real good, and I've still got too much turnip. That's okay, I've got a little jar the rest of this will go into, it'll be great. There we go. All right, come on over here. See if you can watch me explode a glass jar. two down. Let's see if we can find a small jar for the others. Here we go. Uh, hang on. Yeah, this one will do, I think. That seems about right. Down into the hot water. Stuff it full of turnips. This one's not going to be as full as the others, but that's okay. I'm not sure quite how those are going to turn out, but it'll be fine. I'll eat those quicker. And there you have it, pickled turnips. Now it's time to get down to business. We are going to make conch fritters, and they're going to be delicious. Let me just clean up the turnip mess here real quick, and we'll get going. The conch itself has not quite thawed yet, so we are going to start by making the dipping sauce. Oh, and I should probably put this milk in the fridge. Alrighty. And let's drain the water out of here. Because we don't need it anymore. Now for the sauce, we want kind of a mayonnaise -y sort of dipping sauce with a little bit of uh, flavor to it. So, we're going to start with, give me a second. please. Um, 26th of December, no. There's tartar sauce. 16th of March, 28th. 
Tea. Yes, we're under the deadline on this one. So we got uh, mayonnaise. We've got sour cream. We have a little ketchup. I want to get some pickles, which ironically we just made, but not the same kind of pickles. And a uh, little bit of hot sauce. Also, again, some cumin. So let's start here. We will need a small bowl or ramekin. And for this, I choose to use one like this because that's plenty for me. So now, what we have to do is get us a couple of spoons. Get us a dollop of the sour cream. Very good. That's really all we need. Mm. Very tasty. A little bit of the mayonnaise. Oh, it's still sealed. Wonderful. of the beetroot ketchup, which is also sealed. You can use regular ketchup, just this happens to be what I've got. Um, come on, open. Open sesame. There we go. Wunderbar. That's plenty. Um, we are going to take small cutting board left. We're going to take this pickle and we are going to chop it up teensy. pickle. Mmm. Wonderful. I promise I'm going to stop making a mess here in a minute and do this right. There you go. Now, a little bit of cumin. Just a touch. A little bit of garlic. Again, just a touch. Some, where's my celery salt? There we go. A little celery salt. Plenty of paprika. Come on. And just a touch of onion powder. There we go. Now, we stir this up and we see what we've got. I wanted a little bit of uh, mustard powder, but I don't think I have any. Oh, I know what I've got. Hang on. Hold, please. Little dot of Lars mustard. It's very sweet, so we don't need to put sugar in this afterward. And last but not least, a tiny, 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 tiny drop of Worcestershire. Oh, too much, but that's okay. It'll be good.
There we go. Now that, mmm, that's a dipping sauce. Needs more garlic. And onion. There we go. Give us a sec. And actually what I think it really needs is some more paprika. Oh, I know why. We forgot the hot sauce. Let's just get a little tiny drip of that and I'm gonna do it with a spoon just cause I don't want way too much in there. That's plenty for this. Okay, get that off of there. Mmm. Mmm. That's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. This is just exactly how that sauce should be. So to recap, we've got sour cream, mayonnaise, ketchup, uh, cumin, uh, pickle, uh, paprika, onion, garlic, and uh, hot sauce. Also mustard. So that would be your seafood dipping sauce right there. And with that finished, we are going to go and make the conch fritters. So let's set this aside for a moment. And uh, put our stuff away. And then we'll get to cooking. Uh, I got spices everywhere. <laughs> See, I told you it was going to be worth sticking around after the pickled turnips. Now, go ahead and wash off this knife real quick. And set it right here. We should probably get our mayo back in the fridge. Remind me to make some more stuff with that because I don't use mayonnaise a lot and that's a lot of it and it will go bad if I don't. So, um, yeah. <laughs> now, time to tie our hair back, roll up our sleeves and get down to business. Now, conch fritter time. Now, things really aren't quite thawed just yet, but they're close, and it will do. So conch, it is kind of a shellfish, and mm, it smells almost sweet, in the same way sugar cane smells sweet, except kind of with a fish overtone to it. So imagine like a light fish smell with a light sugar cane smell, and you've got the smell of conch, which is going to be wonderful. So what we do here is we are going to put it on our cutting board and I'll let you guys see this and we are just going to cut it up into tiny little pieces because we just want small fritters suitable for eating, dipping, munching you can see that there's still a little ice on that and uh, it'll be alright it'll thaw pretty quickly once I get it cut into small pieces but you want them just big enough to pick up and eat but small enough to where they stay tender and don't get rubbery so I might just butterfly some of these a little bit just to kind of give them a little more surface area so that they cook faster. You can also hit them with a meat tenderizer. I don't want to split that one really. That one's small enough. Uh, yeah, so we're just going to butterfly the whole conch filet here. <laughs> filet of conch. And they're an odd shape, and I'm unfamiliar with cutting them up, so you'll have to forgive me. These are going to be some strange and odd-sized pieces. I'll just get the ice off. There we go. Now. I don't know what part of the conch this is, but I'm not eating it. 
<laughs> there we go. All right. That's looking really nice, and it smells really good and fresh. I was worried, because, you know, purchasing conch in Cincinnati, Ohio can be a mild adventure, and I was not sure that it was going to end well, but uh, it seems like it's going to be quite all right. There we are. Okie dokie. Now, what we need to do is toss it into some flour before we fry it, and particularly a batter and an egg wash. Now, I may or may not have eggs, because I did not plan well today. I <laughs> but here's the cool thing. We just whipped up that sauce, and if we need something to make the flour stick to it, we can toss a little bit of that in there and just make it stick, and it'll be great. But let me check and see if I've got an egg first, and we'll go from there. Nope, no eggs. So we are directly on to plan B. <laughs> Let me get a bowl real quick and I'll show you what we're going to do here. Okay, small bowl. Make sure it's clean. Wipe it out because it's just been sitting there. And we will throw our conch in there. And we don't want to use too much of our dipping sauce because we want to dip it. But just a little, little spoonful in there. Maybe a little more. And we'll shake it and you know, we'll stir it around. Just to kind of get a light coating on the conch. Because that'll make the flour stick to it. And it'll be real tasty. We won't need to put any egg in it. It'll kind of make a thicker batter. And you'll see that should uh, that should stand up real well. Um, so oil is what we're going to need next. And I think I want to use... Yeah, this pan will be fine. So... Uh, oh, I am ill prepared. Canola oil. Yes, fine. A little canola oil. A little olive oil. And now we gotta get some flour. Be right back. Also, yeah, I am dropping frames. Okay. So normally you just batter these things. Since I'm not going to mix this up into a batter, I'm just going to sprinkle the flour here directly onto them. And toss them around real good. Don't let them stick together. And we'll probably want to keep a little flour by the stove just as we put the individual ones into the stove. But um, here, let's uh, get our oil heating up. And then we'll fry up our conch fritters. What do you guys think? Sound good? I think so. See? They're ready to roll. Although, like I said, I might get a little uh, plate here and flour them a little bit just before they go in. Put my flour away.
There we go. See a little plate of flour. All I got to do is kind of pat them on it before I throw them into the fryer. So our turnips are cooling off real nice. Let's go ahead and stick those directly into the refrigerator so that they can be doing their turnipy goodness thing. And in a few short days, we'll have pickled turnips. And I'll show you what we do with them when I make Cuban sandwiches. It's not quite ready yet. Am I dropping frames? Sorry guys, I'm trying to check on you, but my uh, little tablet isn't really cooperating with me today, so if anyone's talking to me, I'm having a little hard time seeing it, so uh, hello there, if you're there, um, and I hope you're enjoying the show. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not necessarily cooperating. <laughs> so we're going to get a little dot of water on our finger. and Oh, perfect. Hear that? That means the oil's hot. So let's get our conch. Oh, actually, a little too hot. Let's dial that back a bit. Uh, we'll get our conch over here, and if you notice, see the breading is sticking to it real nice, but just another little touch in the olive oil, and we'll throw it on in there. Herb olive oil, and a little touch in the uh, flour. And I have done goof, because these are going to be done fast, and I need something to put them on. So I'm going to stop putting them in right now, get a plate, and some towel paper. There we go. And some tongs. I told you I was ill-prepared today. And this moves quick at this point. Keep them turning. You want them brown but not burned. They smell wonderful. That one's ready. Look at that. Oh, whoop. lost it. <laughs> Look at that. Come on. There we go. That one's almost ready. Let's get another one to go in there. Okay, that one looks ready. This one looks ready. This one's going to take a while, so we'll plunk him dead in the center. That one's almost ready. That one needs to be flipped.
I can't get it to flip. There we go. Just keep them rolling. <laughs> How's everyone doing today? going to be quite a bit of uh, conk actually, which is good because by the time I get done with this it's going to end up being like a $10 snack. sit a minute and wash this off my hands. I may have turned it down a little too low. Yeah. But that's okay. They're smelling wonderful and they're going to be delicious. off that one. <laughs> That's okay. We'll put them back together and eat them as a unit. Oh yeah, there we go. You guys could smell this. It smells scrumptious. <laughs> we just got a couple more little critters left in the bowl, and I'm waiting for these to finish to clear them out a little space for them. We'll just run some water in there. There we go, that one's looking pretty ready. If you don't deep fry them, they don't stick together as well as they should. But, oh, but that's an awful lot of oil to use just for a little snack, so I'm kind of just frying them on either side at the moment, which works just not as well as deep frying them. I like them all nice and crispy golden like that. I should have let them all go a little bit longer. But that's okay. They're done. And ready to roll. But I will let these go a little bit longer than the first batch. 
And then after that, we're going to sit and eat and enjoy them. Let's see. Here's by 23rd of June 2018, so that's fine. Do I need to refrigerate this after opening? Refrigerate it after opening and consume within four weeks. So yes, we'll be using this and a lot of other stuff. Let's flip these bad boys. There we go. So how's everyone doing today? You should come on by. Get you some uh, oh, fritters. <laughs> While we wait on those, I'm going to start cleaning up. because I tell you, this is going to be a grand and glorious mess, and the quicker we can mitigate that, the better. gentlemen we have it conch fritters I am gonna scrape this out real quick before it coagulates and then I'll show you these and then I'm gonna go off and uh, eat my snack Hang on. and if any of you guys have any questions about today's meal what it is where you get it how you get it um, hit me up I'm always glad to answer questions so for right now, let's uh, do something about this. Um, hot oil. It's always fun to try and figure out what to do with it. In this case, kids don't try this at home. Bad idea to mix oil and water. Usually. But I don't currently have anything better to do with this. So here are our conch fritters. How's that look? Pretty awesome, huh? <laughs> Can you all see that now? I like the ones that are nice and crispy and dark like this. But the uh, lighter ones are fine. It's uh, a mixture of canola and olive oil. And they're really, really good. And I was keeping my eye on one that I took out near the beginning so that I don't burn myself when I do this. Oh, here you go. But now all you do is you take your dipping sauce, you dip your conch fritter in it, and then <laughs> I've got my snack for today, you guys. Oh, that's beautiful. They're wonderful. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this stream. I am going to go eat my um, snacks, and uh, I will... Uh, See you guys next stream. In the meantime, have a wonderful day. And uh, I'm going to throw over the host to somebody. So take care. Um, have a good one. And I will catch you guys real soon. Bye. Let's see who we're going to throw over to today. Um, we have got uh, Mary Molly 16. Oh, Battery Powered Specs is streaming. Yeah. Uh, who else? Uh, we're going to do battery powered specs, I think. So let's do host battery 
Powered Specs. And you guys have a great day. Bye. Hey, Ochi Oishi, how you doing? I'm just wrapping up the stream, but look. Conk, well, let me show you on the other one. Conch fritters. They're fried conch, which is kind of a shellfish. It's almost like a whelk. Um, we made pickled turnips, and uh, we did a dipping sauce for them. So uh, if uh, you're interested, uh, check it out in the video on demand in a minute. Oop, I just dropped it in the dipping sauce. Mmm. Yum. But um, thanks for coming by. I will... Uh, mm, sorry. I will catch you next time. How you doing today? Yeah, I'm ending. I'm sorry. I'm about to throw over to battery-powered specs. But um, I'll catch you over there. And in the meantime, have a great day. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Bye.